Hey guys and welcome back to another Unfiltered Gamer board game review for the game Captain's Gambit Kings of Infinite Space by Cloudfall Studios. The game plays 4 to 8 players, takes roughly about 20 to 40 minutes to play and is for ages 14 and up. And in the game you are going to be playing as one of the Shakespearean literature heroes such as Romeo and Juliet, Mercutio, King Lear, Rosalind, and so on and so forth. Your objective is to defeat your enemies with the specific requirements on your card. Every single hero or captain has their own unique ability and their own unique objective. Will it be to defeat the character who has the highest health or somebody who is uh, like Romeo and Juliet, they want to live together, maybe somebody who wants to live to the end of the game, or they want to have the most blood tokens by the end of the game uh, when and still be alive. Another hero might be specifically targeting another player to defeat feet before anybody else does, and if so, that will trigger the end game. You'll check to see who has basically won the game by that point when one person triggers their end game, and every player who meets their objective is the winner. Don't forget though, you'll be utilizing actions in the game, much like the game Coup, in which you're going to choose on your player board to either do simple actions for free, or you can do the permit actions, which will have you basically either bluff, or based on the permits that you have, utilize that specific action that will give you some type of benefit. Now, of course, if your health goes to zero because you've either taken too much damage, not been able to shield it, and or you chose to bluff throughout your turn, then you are done for. Will you be the person who's able to conquer and defeat all your opponents by achieving your victory condition, or will you be left astray in a Shakespearean tragedy? Find out in the game Captain's Gambit. Let's go ahead and take it down below. I'll show you how the game is played, and then we'll come up for my review. So here is Captain's Gambit, and I'm basically just going to show you how the game is set up and the basic aspects of play for the game. First of all, you can utilize these captains and alternate captain boards uh, for the different number of players you are playing with, and of course they also have the alternate versions, which explains them as well. If you're playing the base game, the simple aspect of the game, the, you know, you, you, the first timers game, you won't need those. Give every single player one of these guys here, and for every player that doesn't have one, or if there's a couple players left who don't, use these and split these amongst the players as player aids. These explain how the game is played throughout the entire game, which makes this very nice. For the rest of them, you can go ahead and set them aside if you don't need them. Then you're going to have the round counter board. Go ahead and place an energy marker in each of the spaces. These each represent a round of the game, and at the end of the 12th round, the game will end immediately, regardless of who is dead, who's alive, um, and of course, if no one has one. If somebody wins before this, the game can trigger an ending before that. Uh, give every single player a, a captain, and these are all unique captains in the game. And of course, uh, if you want, you can look at the books. They'll tell you the different captains that you can choose to play with based on the number of players, and uh, they are, some of them are going to play better depending on the number of players you're using in the game. Set aside the rest of them, shuffle them up, and deal one out to every single player. Then go ahead and take the uh, deck of cards here that are going to have all the different permit actions. It, the book will tell you if you set aside any of these cards or not. If you're playing with seven or more players, you don't. You simply will shuffle these guys up and deal out two to every single player. There are unique cards like Diplomatic Immunity and Identity Theft that you can add to the game if you would like as an extra variant. These provide a little bit more gameplay and stylization. If not, you can set these aside as well. And then, of course, give everybody two energy. There should be a pool of energy, of blood, and these blue tokens here, which will be used for different things. And then, of course, unique character icons and tokens as well. Go ahead and take a marker, these little guys here, and place it on the 10. That's your starting health. The max you can have is 15, and the lowest you can have is zero. If you get a zero, you're dead, and that will trigger the end of the game for you, most likely. And then you can begin the game. Choose a first player, and that first player is going to start by taking an energy off of this round marker here, and then choosing an action off of their board. Now, your board is gonna have two types of actions. The simple ones, which you can always choose to utilize, and the permit actions. Permit actions require you to have a permit in order to use them. And this character here has got a network and a drain, which means they can use these two actions for free without having to bluff. Now, of course, if this character wanted to, they could do a shield, fortify, overcharge, or barrage uh, without having a card but at the cost of any other player uh, having the ability to basically call them out on it. And if you're ever called out on using an action you don't possess in the permanent action areas, you'll lose three HP 
from this little marker here, you'll just mark your health down. Uh, so you always want to be careful with these guys. However, these guys are always free to use. You can always strike, repair, charge, bribe, or message. Striking is always going to do damage to another player. Repairing will heal yourself. Charging gives you more energy. And bribing is going to basically give an energy to another captain. And you can do this action twice. And then message will let you draw a new card from the permit deck and replace it with one that you already have. And the other only thing that I need to explain, because all of these are basically these actions, but a little more powerful, is the shield. The shield will always allow you to negate Drain, uh, which is this guy here. And it can also be used to pay energy to block damage that would be dealt by a strike or a barrage. And you can use this even when it's not your turn, even if you're not taking damage yourself, but maybe another player. So for instance, if somebody like Mercutio was taking damage, I could, if I want to, spend two energy to block two damage that would be dealt to Mercutio. But regardless, that's the idea. You'll take one energy, you will use one of these actions here, regardless of whether you have the card or not. People will basically have the opportunity to call your bluff if you use one of these, and then somebody will take the next turn. They'll you'll pass, and the next turn will go to this next player. And they will get an energy from the supply, and they'll take an action. The only person who's ever going to be taking from the round area here is the first player. And that first player is just going to take one of these guys here, just to symbolize that the rounds have come to an end and a new round is beginning. Uh, throughout the game, there's going to be little markers on each of the rounds that will have you check for certain characters' abilities based on the round. At the end of the round, check for a victory for different players. Some cards will have you flip them over. Other cards are going to activate when you kill a certain player or at the end of the game. Like Brutus here, as long as uh, during the prologue you mark somebody with one of these tokens and you kill that player and no one else does, you win. However, if anybody else does, you can lose the game. <laughs> Romeo and Juliet work together to try and survive throughout the entire game, and there's a ton of other characters in this game that will be doing different things in order to survive or sustain or kill another player or kill multiple players in fact and that's basically the idea of the game it's pretty straightforward pretty simple take your energy take your action and then pass and everybody's gonna have that opportunity when somebody's victory condition is triggered the game will end and everyone will check victory conditions whoever is the winner because there could be multiple winners based on um what people are required to do maybe it's just survive then the game will end and you can go ahead and choose a new leader choose new captains and begin again the game captain's gambit anyway that's the idea of the game let's review it captain's gambit at its core is a bluffing game that is also a game of hidden roles or identities you need to work with the players who are around you in order to succeed your goal and you also have to work against them it really just depends on what character you're playing if we go over a couple of these characters, like for instance, Hamlet, during the prologue, you mark a captain with a hidden icon. If you kill the captain, you win. You lose if they die in any other way, especially before the end of the game. Or Richard III, you win if you're the last person alive. Before your action on your turn, you can reveal your card to target all opponents who have less health than you have energy, and you do 10 damage to all of them. So it's a way of defeating everybody all at once. Or maybe somebody like Tybalt, which says during the prologue, select another captain to become Mercutio. You win if you kill them all before they kill you. You lose if they die in any other way, and so on and so forth. There's a ton of different characters. Some of them are just attempting to survive. Others are attempting to survive and keep another person alive, like for instance, Romeo with his Juliet. And of course, you also have to take into consideration the actions, it's much like the game Coup. And I would be um, remiss to say that this game doesn't share a lot of similarities to games like Coup and Resistance. In fact, it's kind of a mashup of the two types of games with its own unique twists, and of course, variants and additional cards in the game, uh, but you'll be getting these permit actions. These permit actions are basically more powerful basic actions that you can take of course, if you're lying, which you're allowed to lie in the game, and somebody calls you out on it, you'll take damage. Bluffing is a way of basically removing your health if you're not careful, or a way of providing a benefit to you if you're able to uh, successfully bluff your way to victory. All, of course, the basic actions are free to use, but they have a cost, most likely, and they're going to be energy. Energy you'll get every turn, and some of these actions will also give you energy. Additionally, the permit cards are all the same actions as the basic ones, but are more powerful. They provide a better benefit at the cost of if you're bluffing, you don't actually have those permits, you can have to sacrifice your life, which of course will most likely not help you in any significant way. Now, some characters actually do want to die, but for the most part, you want to survive through the game and achieve your objective, whether it be to kill somebody or just simply to make it all the way through to the end. This game is a four player game and it goes to eight players. So you have to have at least four to play, which means it's a slightly larger game than Coup as far as player count, but about the same for the resistance based count. Um, of course, there's all the 
unique actions in the deck here and with the provided additional variants of things like identity theft and diplomatic immunity, allowing you to basically utilize unique specific permit actions when you don't actually have them, discarding the card and having to draw new ones, and additional tokens for additional characters. Like for instance, Romeo might have to mark Juliet or a character might have to utilize these crown symbols to mark a player that they wish to destroy, defeat, or in, case, in that case also help, depending on the character you're playing. The round markers are essentially very useful because you'll be utilizing it in order for you to track the turns. And the round marker will also indicate when to check for specific characters, objective abilities, revealing abilities, and hopefully to succeed the game, reaching certain rounds in order to do so. Um, there is a lot of stuff going on in the game, but it's very straightforward. Gather an energy, choose an action, perform the action. If it's free, you're done. If it's an action that requires a permit, players can call you out on it because you may or may not have that permit card. If no one calls you out on it, you're done. Take the action and the next player goes. However, if they do and you take damage, you're going to potentially lose the game. So you have to be very careful with that. Bluffing, deduction, secret identities, a nice big mix of and complement each other very well. Uh, this is a really great mashup of a game. For those players who've never played a game that involves bluffing, deduction, or identity, this is a great choice for you. Now, of course, it's kind of a mashup, like I said, so if you want to check out one of the original games, like I said before, like Resistance or Secret Hitler or Coup, or of course there's the Coup variant, which I'll post somewhere as well, um, then maybe those ones will be the first steps, and then you can jump into something which is a little more complex like this game. Additionally, what I really like too is that the rules are very simple to understand. It also has an appendix for any additional questions you might have, and the back of every board is going to provide player references and an explanation of the turn summary, as well as additionally alternative captains, base captain boards uh, that will all basically kind of allow you to change the game with the different number of players, and of course when you want to kind of mix it up. And you can always mix it up with this game. There's no reason why you couldn't. Of course, more players works better for certain captains than others. This, however, is an aggressive game. If you don't like aggressive games, if you don't have more, four or more players to play the game, and if you don't like games that involve having to lie, this is not for you. This game involves a lot of lying, a lot of calling people out on a lie, and while you don't have to lie, lying and getting away with it is very beneficial, or pretending to lie, getting called out and making them take damage is also very beneficial. Overall, a very solid game. I'm a huge fan of Resistance, I'm a fan of the Shakespearean works, and my buddy Josh is also a big fan. We played this live and we really, really enjoyed this game. My buddy is a big fan of uh, the Shakespearean works, and because of that, he gave it his seal of approval. Uh, he's gonna pick up the game. He's like, I'm gonna buy this game, where do I get it? Well, there'll be a link down below where you can choose to get it if you'd like. Um, there's a ton of different characters that are involved in Shakespeare, and I really do enjoy the artwork for this game. It reminds me kind of like a few of those new Netflix uh, animation cartoons. They look really, they look really cool, and they're very unique. It's like a sci-fi Shakespeare type of a theme that kind of works. Um, in its own way that I haven't seen before. And everything is very laid out, very simplistic to understand. This took us like five to 10 minutes to understand how to play. And we played this multiple times, even when the camera was off, because that's how much we enjoyed the game. If it sounds like something for you, there's a link down below in the description where you can go ahead and pick up the game, Captain's Gambit. Gambit, Kings of Infinite Space. This is one I'm gonna keep in my collection for a long time because this is something that's new, uh, something that's unique to two games I really already enjoy and something I'm going to definitely bring out for those players who have already played the previous games, Resistance and Coup, <laughs> that want something a little new, a little fresh. And because I like both of those, and I'm sure like people like my cousin Ashley and my wife Callie enjoy those games, this one was going to see a lot of play in my house. So if you're interested, like I said, link down below in the description. For me, overall, a solid, fun game, provided you don't mind the little critiques that I have. Have. Thank you guys for watching another Unfiltered Gamer board game review for the game Captain's Gambit Kings of Infinite Space. If you enjoyed this video, please go ahead and hit that subscribe button along with the bell notification button. Go ahead and check out unfilteredgamer.com, blog posts, giveaways, Kickstarter lists, and more. And also, don't forget to go ahead and head over to our um, our Patreon. You can support us for a dollar and it helps us produce more content. We do live streaming every Sunday at 6.30 p.m. PST where we stream games just like this one. And like I said before, we did stream this one. So if you want to see gameplay to decide even further for yourself if this is something for you, you can go to our live stream section. It's our last previous video from the date of this video's release. And you'll see how much fun we had. It's, it's very easy to say this is a game that I would pick up if you like deception games. Thank you guys so much for watching. And as always, I look forward to Deception in Space, utilizing Shakespeare with you next time.